assalamu alaikum dear students welcome to dr rumi lectures in our previous sessions we studied that whenever there is injury to the vessel wall the first step is vasoconstriction followed by platelet plug formation so platelets will accumulate here this formation of platelet plug is also called as primary hemostasis it's a temporary weak plug which is required to stop bleeding it is further strengthened by fibrin meshwork or fibrin clot which is made from fibrinogen protein the process of blood coagulation is also called as secondary hemostasis however it is important to note that this clot which is formed here it's not a permanent process to stop the bleeding it's a transient mechanism until the vessel has repaired itself so this repair of the injured vessel is done by fibroblasts which are a kind of connective tissue cells these fibroblast cells they move from the surrounding connective tissue towards the injured area or towards the injured vessel fibroblasts are involved in the regeneration process they produce collagen fiber and they make a scar here in this way this injury in the vessel wall will be repaired how does it take place these activated platelets which make the platelet plug release a growth factor which is called as platelet derived growth factor this growth factor is responsible for increased proliferation and also increased function of the fibroblasts and in this way this repair of the injured vessel will take place simultaneous to this vessel repair fibrinolysis also occurs so that this clot is dissolved and the flow of blood is once again maintained in this vessel this is especially important for smaller blood vessels so if this fibrinolysis or dissolution of clot does not occur then the vessel will remain blocked and even after the healing has occurred the blood flow will not continue we need a very important plasma protein for this process of thrombolysis or fibrinolysis the protein is called as plasminogen it's also called as pro fibrinolysin it's produced from liver and this protein plasminogen is trapped into the clot along with other plasma proteins this globulin protein when it is present in plasma it is in inactive form so it's a pro enzyme or zymogen and when this protein is activated its function is just like trypsin that is it causes proteolysis plasminogen is converted into its active form which is plasmin by the action of an enzyme which is called as tissue plasminogen activator we call it tissue plasminogen activator because it is released from the damaged tissues and especially the endothelium this tissue plasminogen activator it is released slowly from the damaged tissue and this makes sense why it should be slowly released because we don't want this plasmin to be produced very quickly after tissue injury occurs let's suppose if after tissue injury occurs and then plasminogen is rapidly converted to plasmin by the rapid action of tpa all that's not rapid but let's suppose if it is rapid then what will happen this plasmin will break the fibrin clot and then we cannot stop bleeding first time is given for the clot to form so this is why when injury occurs to the tissues time is given for the clot to form and then we break it slowly after some days when vessel starts healing so i hope you understand why it is important for the tissue plasminogen activator to be released slowly from the damaged tissue and the endothelium plasmin which is activated form of plasminogen is also called as fibrinolysin because it causes the lysis of fibrin meshwork so the action of plasmin is just like a scissor it cuts the fibrin fibers and causes the clot dissolution during this process when fibrin fibers are degraded are split by the proteolytic action of plasmin it converts into its uh, small products which are called as fibrin degradation products and one very important which is formed from this breakdown of uh, fibrin is called as d dimer so in this way the plasmin converts uh, fibrin clot into its uh, degradation products and these degradation products they are removed by the proteolytic action of uh, other cells like wbcs and liver especially plays a very important role in clearing these fibrin degradation products and some of these products they are cleared through kidney so this fibrinolytic system is very important in removing the clot which have already occurred and if healing has taken place and this is especially important to open the clogged 
smaller diameter blood vessels. Plasmin not only removes the fibrin clot, it also removes some other clotting factors from blood. Like it removes clotting factor number one, which is fibrinogen, number two, which is prothrombin, clotting factor number five, then eight and twelve. And in this way, by removing these uh, clotting factors from blood, plasmin prevents the inappropriate blood clot formation. For example, if vessel has not injured, there is no need for any new clot. So not only it breaks the old clot after a few days when healing has occurred, but it also prevents the inappropriate formation of new blood clots. For example, when vessel has not injured and clot is not desired. So in this way, this fibrinolytic system can cause hypocoagulability of the blood which means it decreases the clotting tendency of the blood if it is overly activated. What is the clinical significance of this D-dimer in the blood? D-dimer is one of the fibrin degradation products and D-dimer test can be used if someone is having clotting disorder or ongoing hemostasis. For example, if someone is having clot which is formed in the deep veins of leg, deep vein thrombosis, uh, if the clot has broken from the leg veins and gone to the lungs which is called as pulmonary embolism or in another condition when there is increased thromboembolism like in DIC disseminated intravascular coagulations in all these conditions in DVT in pulmonary embolism and DIC because there is increase in clotting tendency of the blood so that's why there is increased levels of D dimers in the blood just like tissue plasminogen activator there are some drugs or other chemicals which can cause the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin and these are called as thrombolytic agents some of the examples of thrombolytic agents are streptokinase which is produced from a bacteria streptococcus, altiplase and retiplase. All these agents, they stimulate this conversion of plasminogen which is inactive into the plasmin which is active form and hence they increase the breakdown of the fibrin meshwork. In this way they cause thrombolysis or fibrinolysis. These are clinically very useful substances because they can be used to break the clot if that is formed in the coronary blood vessels for example after myocardial infarction or if this clot has formed in some of the brain's blood vessel in case of stroke or transient ischemic attack these thrombolytic agents if given very quickly in the first few hours of the myocardial infarction or stroke they can be very beneficial and they can save life of the person because they will break the clot in the coronary vessel or in the cerebral blood vessels in this way they will restore blood supply and will prevent the damage to heart or brain due to oxygen deprivation. There is another group of drugs which are called as antifibrinolytic drugs. These drugs inhibit the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin. Some important examples of these antifibrinolytic drugs are tranexamic acid and amino caproic acid. This tranexamic acid is available in Pakistan by the name of transamine drug because they block the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin. Hence, plasmin is not formed and this uh, fibrin clot will not break. In this way, these drugs will make this fibrin clot to stay there for a longer period of time. And these drugs, they can be used in those conditions in which we want to prevent heavy bleeding. For example, if a lady is having heavy menstrual bleeding and we want this bleeding to decrease or to stop, we can give this kind of drug like tranexamic acid. So it will decrease the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin. There will be no breakdown of the clot which has already formed there. So the clot will stay there in the injured vessel and bleeding will stop. So just to summarize today's session very quickly, the fourth important step in hemostasis is to repair the injured vessel and this is by fibroblasts. The fibroblasts are activated by the platelet drive growth factor which is released by the activated platelets which are trapped in this blood clot. Fibroblasts increase collagen formation in this way scar formation occurs here and once this uh, injured vessel has already healed or scar has formed here we don't want this clot anymore and we want to remove this clot so that once again the blood supply in this vessel can be restored. For that we need a globulin protein which is synthesized by the liver we call it plasminogen. Plasminogen is inactive protein which is to be converted into the plasmin by the action of TPA. TPA is released slowly from the injured tissues and endothelium. And when plasmin is formed, this works like a scissor and this cuts the fibrin threads. In this way, the fibrin degradation products are formed and one of the most important fibrin degradation product is 
D-dimer. And the concentration of D-dimer will increase in blood in those conditions in which there is increase in clotting. For example, in deep vein thrombosis and in case of disseminated intravascular coagulation. Some important drugs which can enhance this conversion of plasminogen to plasmin are called as thrombolytic agents, streptokinase, altiplase and ratiplase. And these agents can be used very quickly after an MI has occurred or stroke has occurred. Because these drugs after making plasmin will quickly dissolve the clot. In this way, the blood supply will be restored to our heart and to our brain. And the damage to the myocardial tissue or to the brain due to oxygen deprivation can be prevented. Another important clinical application of this fibrinolytic system is that it can be suppressed by drugs called as anti-fibrinolytic drugs like tranexamic acid and aminocaproic acid. And these drugs by decreasing the formation of plasmin in this way decrease the breakdown of fibrin clot. So the clot will stay there and in this way it will prevent bleeding. And these drugs can be used in those persons who are having heavy bleeding. For example, a female having heavy menstrual bleeding. In our next session, we will study why blood does not clot naturally in our blood vessels. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you next time with another video.